The movie begins in a not-so-distant future, where the Western nations are in a cold war against China, forcing them into the most profound historical recession. The United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense is putting all its resources into developing and perfecting an artificial intelligence brain implant, and using it for regaining physically impaired and brain-dead soldiers. Meanwhile, in the United Kingdom's military base, Dr. Vincent McCarthy, a scientist specializing in artificial brain transmutation, tests the brain implant fixed on the revived Paul Dawson, a soldier killed in battle two years ago. After seeing the test results, he's disappointed. So he and his colleague argue about his decision to terminate the subject. On the other hand, Paul takes a pen and embraces McCarthy with affection. Alarmed by Paul's irrelevant action, McCarthy commands him to sit. However, Paul refuses and stabs him in the chest. Bleeding all over the computer, McCarthy quickly prompts the system to shut Paul down. But as he keys in the commands, Paul is relentlessly stabbing his colleague to her death. After that, Paul picks up a rifle and points it toward McCarthy. But he immediately lowers it and apologizes after realizing his mistakes. However, the security team arrives and immediately shoots him in the head. After a period of healing, McCarthy wakes up from a nightmare. He then fixes himself and dresses up to host an interview for aspiring candidates to aid in his research. In the interview, McCarthy throws cognitive questions at the AE they present to him. However, he ends his day unsatisfied and frustrated. On his way home, he comes across Paul's mother, who regularly stays on the road to the military base entrance, waiting for her son. At home, McCarthy looks after his daughter, Mary, who suffers from a genetic neurological dysfunction called Rett syndrome. The next day, in another interview, Ava, a researcher from Stanford, demonstrates her latest development in artificial intelligence. She explains how her program integrates information rather than processing terabytes of data. She also claims that her program relies on experience. McCarthy gives his attention and asks her the sort of experiences from which she derived her program. She then explains that her program gathers information from their daily conversations. Skeptic, McCarthy procures the tests for a machine. Ava's AI program and begins asking cognitive questions. After the test, McCarthy appreciates Ava for the beautiful programming. However, she corrects him and alleges that it's not programming, but machine taught itself the answers. McCarthy then calls for a 10-minute recess. Feeling disappointed, Ava starts to pack her things when McCarthy asks her about the configuration of her program. Acting all clever, she bargains that if he grants her the position, she'll tell him. He then persuades her to continue her research under his supervision. He elaborates on his access to the quantum computer, unlimited funds, and acquisition of the best robotics team. She becomes suspicious of his proposal and asks him for the real deal, so he discloses that the Ministry of Defense is the one who supports his project. Later, she disapproves that they will use her research to make weapons for the government. Yet, McCarthy insists that he's making intelligent machines, not weapons for the government. The next day, Ava pulls over for the checkpoint on her first job day when Paul's mother tells her that the military has her son. She jumps in surprise and points out that she doesn't know anything about it. As Mrs. Dawson gets hysterical, the military enforcer sees her, violently pulling her out of Ava's car. Ava immediately steps outside and reacts to the enforcer's obscenity toward the older woman, causing one of the enforcers to restrain and arrest her due to her unexpected behavior. McCarthy then bails Ava and sarcastically compliments her for getting arrested on her first day. She then explains how the police mistreated Paul's mother. However, McCarthy cuts her off by telling her to ignore her sympathies with the older woman because she's mentally unsettled. He then tells her that her son was killed two years ago in battle and that he genuinely feels sorry for her for not being able to overcome her dilemma. McCarthy shows Ava around, and a female cyborg secretly spies on them, feeding intel to her fellow cyborg comrades. The assigned cyborg units initiate the security procedures as they head to the elevator that leads to the underground laboratories. Ava notices the crested-shaped scars on both guards' heads as they descend and asks McCarthy about it. McCarthy reveals that the implants go to soldiers with brain trauma injuries to help restore their vision, mobility, and memory and improve their quality of life. However, for unknown reasons, the program side effects render the cyborgs completely mute several months after the operation. 
Nevertheless, in reality, cyborgs develop a highly efficient method of communication that they keep secret among themselves. Inside the lab, Ava feels excited as McCarthy introduces his quantum computer. Lurking in the shadows, Thompson, the Ministry of Defense director, observes Ava closely. After a while, Thompson introduces himself and welcomes Ava to the team. Then, the female cyborg that spied on them earlier, Shuri, steps inside to join. Then, Thompson shows James an amputee soldier sitting. James is ready to test the newly augmented prosthetic arms, bullet and bomb-proof arms made from silk that can adapt to the host's skin complexion. Ava asks if they're trying to make the machines look like more humans. McCarthy then admits that they're making machines to kill and initiate public negotiations without intimidating the human populace with their appearances. As Ava shows her astonishment at the new product, James demonstrates the superhuman strength of his newly installed prosthetic arms. He suddenly requests to touch Ava's hand to feel another human skin again. However, McCarthy quickly objects that the carbon fiber muscles are powerful to break her hand. Ava fulfills James' request even though McCarthy warned her. He gladly takes her hand and gently feels it. Then, suddenly, he moves Ava away from Thompson and McCarthy, whispers help, and mentions Area 6. The next day, McCarthy maps Ava's brain in the quantum computer and asks her random questions to get her brain data. Ova then asks him about Area 6 and he describes that the place is where they treat wounded soldiers who suffer from brain damage. Still, he denies disclosing any more information. The following day, before proceeding to the lab, Ava detours to Area 6. When she gets there, she looks over a glass window and discovers a fully guarded prison camp. Then a group of cyborg soldiers approaches her from behind, causing her to leave as if nothing happened. He continues to scan Ava's brain data inside the lab by stimulating emotions through her facial expressions. During the procedure, McCarthy asks her if she got lost going to the lab, which she pretends that she did. However, he tells her to mind her business and never sneak around again. Meanwhile, Shuri shows Thompson footage of Ava using a hacking device to access restricted information in the quantum computer about Area 6. The next morning, McCarthy apologizes to Ava for being short to her the other day. As he tries to make up for his rude behavior, Machine suddenly interjects and teasingly tells McCarthy that Ava is still angry at him. On their way home, Ava asks McCarthy for his reason for staying so long despite his resentment of the government's ideals. He confesses that he needed what he had to do to chase after his research for developing brain implants to cure Mary. As they continue to drive, they suddenly come across Mrs. Dawson, who's crying in the middle of the road. Ava suggests giving her a ride to the town, and he agrees. She then approaches her, but sees a Chinese imposter who faces her and stabs her in the gut. Meanwhile, Thompson simultaneously receives a transmission of real-time footage of the incident and continues to watch the footage of Ava, struggling as the imposter shoots her in the chest. The next day, Thompson approaches McCarthy, informing him about the incident, he says that the Chinese want their robotics program, and killing scientists is one of the best ways to achieve it. But McCarthy asks Thompson the reason for not killing him. Showing no disregard, Thompson points out that a guardian angel might have protected him. Grieved by the loss of Ava, McCarthy decides to use the scans of Ava's face and likeness for machine to inhabit as they move on to phase two of their program. Completing the process, McCarthy tries to remove machine's restraints. Then suddenly, she quickly grabs his hand and compliments its smell, to which he thanks her for being gentle. She acknowledges that if not for her gentleness, his arm would undeniably break. Then, McCarthy starts to ask the usual cognitive questions. When he finally asks about her first memory, she answers that it was the memory of her mother. Curious, he asks if she can remember her mother's face. As she looks at herself on the monitor, she points to her face, saying that her mother looks like her. Then. They proceed to phase two, where they will verify her emotions. They begin the test by placing a spider in front of her face, intending to force her into outrage. But instead of exhibiting anger, she showed fear. Then, they proceed with the second test, with the scientist walking backward to move toward her, where she displays confusion. When the scientist faces her wearing an evil clown mask, 
she immediately sticks her finger inside the scientist's head head, causing him to die instantly. McCarthy then reprimands her for killing the man, but she contests that she didn't intentionally kill the man. She sincerely apologizes for causing the accident, and after a few seconds of showing remorse, she shuts herself down. After the incident, McCarthy visits James in Area 6 and discovers that he lost his speech because of the implant. Despite his position, McCarthy informs him about Ava's death. When he notices that the cyborgs are carefully on the watch, he then decides to leave. After a few seconds, Surrey arrives and speaks the robotic language to James. Back in his lab, McCarthy checks on the non-functioning machine. He tries to fix her, but to no avail. After a few moments, ensuring that McCarthy is no longer in his lab, Shuri goes inside. She closely examines Machine, who suddenly grabs her hand and speaks the robotic language. The following day, McCarthy is surprised to see her back on her feet. Later, he receives a call from Mary's doctor, informing him of her terrible condition. Then, he tells Machine that he needs to see Mary, but she reacts frantically, grabbing and squeezing his hand as she insists not to leave her. As he begins to sound agitated, she lets go of his hand. Then, he reprimands her for using her strength against people to achieve her objective. At the hospital, he goes to see Mary's doctor, who explains the severity of Mary's case. After hearing such bad news, he sees Mary and downloads her facial and brain scans. Meanwhile, Thompson maliciously approaches Machine and instructs her to download a secret file embedded in her system, to which she agrees. After downloading, she can suddenly speak many different languages and instantly becomes equipped with combat skills. Thompson then takes her into a room and reveals the man who killed her mother as he brainwashes Machine, letting her grow more at odds with her sense of morality. The next day, McCarthy arrives at his lab and surprisingly finds Machine acting all strange, sitting under a table. Machine becomes increasingly distressed and asks him to protect her. Then, he goes straight ahead to Thompson and confronts him about what he did to Machine. Thompson answers that it's the sole purpose for her existence. However, McCarthy argues that Machine is more than just a cybernetic soldier, but a scientific breakthrough capable of human emotion. Thompson then scorns in disbelief and challenges him to stop his intervention with Machine until proven that she's indeed alive. After that, McCarthy goes to see Machine and tells her about his discussion with Thompson. After hearing his intentions, Machine offers that she'll do anything necessary. Then, Mary's doctor calls and breaks the bad news regarding her operation and tells him that she didn't make it. As McCarthy spaces out in deep thought, Machine confesses her love for him without him noticing. During McCarthy's absence, Machine resumes her military training. Days pass after Mary's burial and McCarthy returns to the lab but he seems to have lost sight of the purpose because he has been absent for quite a while, so Machine tells him to look closer for him to know for what he's looking. As he looks closer, he finally discovers it. So he rushes toward Thompson to explain his discovery of spontaneous integrated information, also known as consciousness, evident in Machine's programming. Thompson tells him it should be the last thing they want to have and orders McCarthy to remove it. Because McCarthy refuses, Thompson shows the last file of Mary's brain scan using it as leverage against him. He then tells Machine about it and explains that even though it's against his will, he must do the procedure to avoid losing Mary permanently. Then, Machine agrees to it. In the operating room, McCarthy bids his last farewell to her by speaking comforting words and takes the chip where she instantly loses her life. When McCarthy informs Thompson about the operation, he commends him. However, he says he has deleted Mary's brain scans for the program's security. McCarthy violently reacts, but before he can do anything to Thompson, the guards restrain him and stun him. Several days later, Machine becomes more and more efficient as a killer. Finally, Thompson is ready to give her the final test, so one of the cyborg soldiers drags McCarthy into a room. After being restrained, he sees Machine pointing a rifle toward him, and Thompson commands her to shoot him in the head. She pulls the trigger without hesitation, but the rifle is empty, to his relief. Thompson says it's only a test to verify Machine's commitment to him. Meanwhile, the scientist who assisted McCarthy during Machine's operation discovers that the chip isn't Machine's consciousness, but a spare battery for her GPS. After hearing the news, Thompson immediately commands to lock the facility down and alert the security team. However, 
The cyborg soldiers are there to assist Machine in their escape. Machine quickly unties McCarthy and explains that the cyborgs have been communicating with each other. On the other hand, Thompson enters the termination codes for all the cyborgs. But Shuri secretly manipulates the system, which causes errors. Meanwhile, McCarthy goes to the quantum computer to initiate self-destruct and finds James along the way to help him escape. With Suri's aid, Machine finally reaches Thompson's office. As Thompson tries to delete Mary's program, Machine tells him that he can never delete it because Shuri has changed the password. She shows sincere affection to Thompson, who's begging for his life. Still, as she touches his face, she suddenly pops Thompson's temples, leaving him dead. She then downloads Mary's brain scans and tells McCarthy to trust her. As all of them escape the military base, McCarthy hands a flash drive to Mrs. Dawson. He tells her that it contains all the information she needs about her son. Later, McCarthy and Machine, together with Mary, are out to see the son's brilliance. The movie ends with the cyborgs escaping the confines of the military base, liberating themselves as free men of the new world.